Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's Lightroom tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how to uh, create some custom uh, color calibration presets for uh, your camera and your lens in Adobe Lightroom. Now, to do this, we're going to be using the Data Color Spider Checker chart and software. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is the 48 uh, patch version. They have a 24 patch version. But what you do is you actually take a photo of that, pull it in Adobe Lightroom here, then you can uh, export it out to uh, Data Color's own uh, software that will then look at that photo and all the colors on it and create a custom uh, profile to correct the colors. So if your camera happens to uh, represent reds a little too strong like Canon cameras do, or if your Nikon cameras actually make the greens and foliage look a little too yellow, the, uh, this will correct that and give you consistent color representation. Now, for example, going from like your uh, Sigma lenses over to your Canon lenses, the way they uh, colors, you know, record colors going through them, they have slight different color cast and stuff. So this is to ensure no matter what camera and lens combination you use, all your photos, at least the end product, will look consistent in, uh, each time, which is very important. Plus, this makes sure if you had to do any kind of product photography that what you're taking a photo of and what you're giving back to the client is exactly what their uh, product they gave you looks exactly like. So you won't, so you can't just buy these and return them, which I guess you could if you really wanted to. So if you're doing like any kind of studio work, you could probably set one of these up, take like your, your favorite 85 mil lens, your favorite camera that you're going to be using for portraits for the most part. Take a photo of it, do the color calibration, and pretty much good to go. Now, it does have gray uh, uh, charts behind these. You can flip these over. And of course, it's got the grayscale in the uh, center. More about that when we get over to the computer here. But if you go out on any kind of location with other color mixes that have been around, uh, color lights, that might, or colors in general, especially like even uh, real estate photography, that could influence your colors as well as your uh, white balance this you need to use this each time so like here in the studio you could probably set it up and I'll use it once very every so often that said I already have a photo that I've got pulled in here uh, to the computer here in the Lightroom and this is a photo that I took with the Canon 80D and used the 50 miller STM lens so let's go over here to the computer okay well let's first take a look at this image here before we put to belt mod now you can see I didn't zoom in real real tight and you don't you actually don't want to you kind of want to uh, pull out as far as you can with this uh because you don't want to uh, go real tight in with when you're uh taking a photo because you get any kind of vignetting or anything in the uh, sides even the out, uh, outer part of your lens can uh don't always represent the colors correctly that's what i'm trying to get at so you want to kind of take this sort of in the middle you know i kind of got probably got a little close here to what you really want to actually take a photo of so keep that in mind you you want to give plenty of space around the image and then just crop in and develop module so let's go ahead and pull it into the develop module here and use our crop tool here now we don't have to be like super precise with this just kind of pull it down pretty close as long as you don't uh cut any of the color patches out there we go and you do want to make sure it's in this uh, upper orientation with the pastels on one side and your bright colors on the other. Okay, now once we've got the, uh, that done, we'll have to uh, do a little bit of calibration for this. The first thing we're going to do is we want to click our little uh, white balance dropper here and click on E2. So you have the letter E at the top here, then the number 2 over to the side. E2 is your 20% gray. That's the one you want to click on, and that should uh, neutralize all your uh, colors as far as your white balance goes. Okay. It looks like it did a pretty good job. If you look over towards the histogram, it now reads uh, reds, RGB, you know, 89.3, 89.4, and 89.3, which is pretty close. Okay. Once we got that done, now we have to have E1 here. If you kind of just run your mouse cursor over it, you see that it reads about 95.4, 95.5, 95.3. We actually want to drop this down to 90. Now, so we're doing that, I'm going to first be lowering the exposure. Can't lower it to about negative 65 here. And that got it 
close enough. You know, negative 65 on the exposure here, or negative uh, 0.65, let me get that correct. Got us down to 90.2, 90.2, and 90. All right, that's perfectly fine. The next thing we're going to do is, is E6 down here. E6 needs to be at 4, maybe at the most 5%. So we need to drop that down as well. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down shadows. And that thing has got it down to probably around 17% getting closer now let's start dropping our blacks down here until it gets pretty close as well let's see negative 68 get that is close here negative five still needs to go down just a little bit and we got us really close let's go down negative 72 or something like that so yeah, negative 72 got us pretty close. Yeah, I think negative 72 is on the blacks. Now that's got our chart looking very vibrant here, very accurate for the colors and stuff. But some of the colors, you know, they're not just perfect yet. So this is what the software is going to do. As soon as we got that done, go ahead and click on library again. Now let's take our image, our chart here. Now let's go over here and uh, right click on it and go down to edit in and you want to go down to find spider checker editing once you found that go ahead and click on that okay now the dialog box is going to come up here you want to use tiff format because it's going to create another image to pull into the software it's, the software itself does not support raw files but this is going to pull any kind of uh adjustments that we've already made to the uh, the chart here that photo into the software now it wants TIFF you want to leave it on an OBRGB even if you're not editing in that color space that's the color space that the software is going to look for and you of course you want to leave it on 16-bit color depth okay once you've got that done go ahead and click edit and it should pull our uh, photo into the software Okay, wonderful. Now our spider checker software is up here. Now notice the mouse cursor here. It's got little arrows if you go to the edge. And you'll notice these little lighter color patches. What we want to do is we want to kind of pull these down to the about in the center of each one of those on each side. Ah, that's really, really good right there. Once we've got that done, there's a few things you want to consider here. Now I have the little radio button here next to save is Lightroom because Lightroom is what I use. The next one is a so, uh, save to Adobe Camera Raw or save to Focus. Now I don't use Focus, don't hardly use Photoshop enough. So what I'm gonna do is create one for uh, Adobe Lightroom here. That, okay, now there's a few more options under mode. We have saturation, color metric, and portrait. Now, saturation will kind of oversaturate the colors just a little bit. That may be what you're going for. Uh, I don't use that one. But there are some occasions you might want to. You know, just read your manual and decide if that's what you need or not. Now, color metric is the most accurate. So if you're doing any kind of product photography, I really recommend you go back with color metric. You know, color metric, whatever you want to call it. Now, what I use the most is portraits. And the reason I use portraits the most is because the reds and the pinks and uh, skin tones in general, it kind of uh, takes a little bit of the red out. It's just a subtle hint, but it's enough I find it more pleasing. Now, that said, I do create the color metric and the portrait ones both for each camera and lens combinations that I use here in the studio. Okay, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it on portrait. Now, go ahead and click on save calibration. Now, what you're gonna to want to do here is you're going to first name the camera. Let's say Canon 80D. Then you want to name your lens, like a 50 millimeter STM lens, okay. Then we want to name this one as portrait. 
of course, outside this, I'm just going to put tutorial. That way I know what this preset was for and just delete it later. But you want to, like I said, you want to name your uh, camera body, your lens, and the mode that you saved it in. Okay. Once you've done that, go ahead and click OK. But now if you want to go back and create a color metric one, you can click on build another calibration right now. If you don't want to, just go ahead and click on quit. Okay. Wonderful. Now the first thing we got to do is close Adobe Lightroom because Right now, even if we went down and pulled the, the file that we want to uh, color correct into uh, the develop module, our new preset will not show up until we close Lightroom. That's the only way Lightroom works to actually bring in new presets. Okay. Go ahead and start Lightroom back up. It's going to see all the new, new presets that are created. Okay, wonderful. Now, we're not going to use the TIFF file here. But the CR2 here is the raw image. That's the one I want to pull into the develop module. Okay. Now I want to go down here to hue saturation luminescence. And if you look over here to the side, this is where all the adjustments are going to uh, come, actually going to be applied to. So we we'll go over here. Let's find the one we just created. Yep, Canon 80D 50 millimeter STM portrait tutorial. Go ahead and click on that one, and you'll notice all these adjustments here that it just applied. Now let me go ahead and click Command Z again, and you can see the yellows, the reds, all those changed a little bit. Okay, they might be too uh, bright, maybe too red, too little too saturated. You know, it might not be exactly where they should be. Okay. Let me go ahead and apply that one again. And you see, it's a subtle change, but now they are completely accurate. You see the hues where it adjusted them, the saturation where it adjusted them, and the luminance. What's really great about this is if you still want to go back and change any of them, you can actually modify each one of these presets that's already created. Okay. Once you've got that done, you can go back to a library here. Now, if you had a whole bunch of other photos that you wanted to apply this color uh, preset to, keep in mind, we've also already got the white balance set for this uh, raw file here. We can click on it, highlight all those other uh, files, and go ahead and sync settings. And that will sync them all up and have all your photos with the correct white balance and the correct colors. Well, okay, everyone. Well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And now you find an understanding of why these might actually be worth having. Now, for the average portrait photographer, you probably don't need this. You really don't. Just a, a good, honest, uh, accurate white balance card. Probably all you really need. But anybody that's doing any kind of product photography or any kind of in your major uh, you know, photo shoot where colors, accuracy is key because that's what being professional is, is doing things correctly, not half-assed. You know, one of these for just a hundred dollars is should be in, with you at all times. Now, like I said, you think you would probably want to buy this, do all your color calibration, and just send it back. Well, you, you can do anything you want to, but if you do any kind of like, uh, like I said, those paid work product photography, you really want to take a photo of one of these at the start of every photo session or any kind of light changes. That way, later on down the road. If your uh, client says, hey, I just got the photos from you, nothing looks correct, everything, the colors are all off, what did you do wrong? You can show him that photo, where you took the photo of these, and assure him also that your monitor is all already also color calibrated. And if it doesn't look right on his system, it's probably because his system's not calibrated. But this uh, is kind of like a small insurance policy you should have with you, you know, especially for product photography at all times. But anyway, that's it for the tutorial. I hope you've uh, found it helpful, and I hope it gets you started using one of these. Like I said, they have a 24 uh, patch version, which is about half the price. It doesn't have the nice uh, hard case. Uh, of course, it's, like I said, it's not as bulky either. And, and you know that way, if you're not really dive into one of the for a hundred dollars one of these yet, you could always get the 24 patch version. You know, to suit whatever needs you want. 
But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you do, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe is free, it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.